but a special mention actually should be said to your quarterback, Chris Venegas. I mean, he's been phenomenal for you guys all season, potentially the, the key player, if you will. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Chris has come on board. Uh, we were in contact this time last year, and he was like, yeah, got, got on board, want to come over. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a great guy, humble. He's, he's, he lifts everybody around him, so it's not just saying, oh, he's an American quarterback, he can do this, that, and the other. Um, in training, around, I mean, the, the rookie receivers we've had this year, they've come on no end. I mean, they've got guys that would never touch the ball before, and now they look like a receiver. It's, it's phenomenal having that kind of character around the team, and he just lifts everybody. Well, just quickly, uh, a word on their American quarterback, Chris Venegas. He's been absolutely outstanding all season long. I mean, how crucial is it to have someone like that, not just in the locker room, but out on the pitch playing for you too? Yeah, having someone with experience and that knowledge and probably been playing for basically all of his life, um, it does help when it comes to actually understanding, being able to read the plays. And you want a quarterback that can really lead the team. So having somebody that fully understands what they need to do, when they need to do it, but also what they need to change up, it makes the coach's life so much easier having someone on the pitch that they can trust and they obviously trust him. Listening to our referee, Ben Griffiths. Exeter, you're the listening team. This is the coin we use. The football logo is heads. The Union Jack football is tails. The Baffle logo is heads and the Union Jack football is tails. And it's up. That means you've won the toss. What are you going to do? You want to take the ball? Okay. And you have won the toss and we'll receive. Hi guys, kick off in 30 seconds, please. Well, they have a confirmation from the coin toss. NTU have won the toss and they will receive at the kickoff tap. But here we go. We are ready to get underway. The University of Exeter kicking us off and Nottingham Trent will receive the ball from kickoff. And they will return with Joe Parton. Parton trying to find a hole that his team are making for him, but he is going to be dragged down. That's a good start there from the Trent number four. Keep an eye out for that very special number seven jersey in amongst the melee there in front of you on your screen. For that is Chris Venegas, the chosen one who's tr crossed the pond. He's travelled here with the Nottingham Trent team to Loughborough today to really make an impact from the quarterback position. The American obviously inundated with footballing experience out in the States itself. And Chris Venegas standing in at quarterback. Here we go. Play action, Venegas looking downfield for a receiver. He might have someone deep downfield, and he does, and Ben Harrison, Harrison completely unmarked, and getting huge yardage for Nottingham Trent right from the get-go. Tash, that is what you call an opening. Well, there's Venegas, hands it off straight away to the brilliant Adwoyla Coca, and Coca is in for the first touchdown of the game. What a start from Nottingham Trent. What we saw there was the O-line doing exactly what they needed to do. He wanted to run straight down the middle and they provided that gap. They managed to get their blocks in perfect so that they're, it was basically like parting the Red Sea. The gap opened, he ran straight through and was able to get the touchdown and get the ball over the line. You've got to do it all. You can't just have one job that you just stick to and don't do anything else. You've got to be a very dynamic player in this game. Here we go, Venegas. Standing over the ball, hands it off to Coca. Coca going around the outside of that D line, and still he goes. Coca driving those legs. A good gainage of three yards there for the Trent running back. Play action to Venegas. Again, Venegas looking downfield to see what options are available. It's a lovely long pass into brilliant open space, but it's a fumble on the play. Somehow Trent had managed to pick it up and keep it alive. Initially, the fumble came in from Sosa, but Harrison was there to dive on the ball and keep Trent in possession. When we watch this replay right now, you watch, and it's the drop back from Venegas that makes it. Look how much space that he's got to be able to loft that ball into the air. Right, his right. Oh, and it was the tackle from number one. Ben Hellett, he's come straight back on from that injury assessment. It's great to hear that he's able to continue. You can see him just having a word on the sideline here about what should happen next. And Benegas is going to be the communicator. He's going to be the messenger from the touchline to the huddle. Third and three. Benegas looking downfield for the throw. He might have to go himself. There's not many options available. He's under some significant pressure here. Lovely evading of the tackle. Still looking downfield is Venegas and wide open. He's got a friend with him. That's a great bit of play from Nottingham Trent. And then number 85, Joe White. Great 
Great read of the play from Venegas, but once again, we big, bigged him up in the build-off. He is paying dividends so far in this match. Massively. I think without him, and Nottingham Trent would not be where they are right now. He is, the, his ability to be able to read the play, let the play develop, but also make those, make those key calls. I mean, we watch this replay. He had to hold on to that ball for so long before he could actually find a receiver that was free. So that just shows that Exeter are doing their job well. But at the same time, yeah. We For Nottingham Trent, Venegas standing over the ball. Play action now. Venegas hands off to Coca. Coca going through the middle. Coca surely for the line. Stopped short is the call. The Exeter D line because that's exactly what happens. And here he goes again. Venegas didn't want to hand it off to Coca. It's a fake from the QB and he's in the end zone for the score. Oh, that was such a good play to watch. It was so good and it was so smart by Venegas there. So smart. The way that Venegas held onto that ball, spinning Coke around to the point where he was like, I am keeping hold of this ball. I am keeping on going and actually completely throwing off the Exeter defense there. Absolutely per point perfect of a play. And let's rewatch this touchdown right here. And that was absolutely perfect by Venegas just look at how well he held onto that ball completely fooling the Exeter defense that he was going to be hanging that ball off to Coca that's exactly what you need from a QB is smart play smart thinking and I love those play actions because that is the moment where you can really fake a defense out and create those moments of brilliance we're really well take a punt of this here comes Abbott, hands it off nicely to Paul who switches the play and Paul is in a lot of space to exploit now. Going down the far touchline, Paul still going, finally bundled out into touch by Ethan Sassman. But that's a huge gain from the extra running back. Touchdown before the end of the half, that would be amazing for them. Well Abbott handed it off once again to Paul who's broken through the first couple of tackles. Paul all the way potentially. He's in the end zone for a touchdown. He's got Exeter on the scoreboard. It's finally happened after the two-minute warning. And what a play from Oluwase Paul. Definitely different. <laughs> they very much are. <laughs> they very much are. Very different games too. But here come Trent on the fourth down punt. And that's a bit of a ski whiff one from Giles because it got charged down and Exeter just run it straight into the end zone. What on earth has just happened? I'm speechless. What has just happened? As far from what I could see, it bounced off the back of, of Nottingham Trent's number 75 off the back of the helmet. That's, I mean, I might be getting the wrong number there, but it was definitely a 70 player and it came off the back of, of his head and they've taken the helmet off straight away of that player. The problem is, there's how, much, how long they can keep up for because this is only the third quarter. They've still got another quarter after this. Well, here we go. Exeter University take the snap with Norden, who's looking to hand it off to a running back. And indeed, it does happen. And they're going around the outside and into the end zone. And it's a score for the Exeter University side. The Demons are alive with Ben McDermott. And in this second half, they are the ones that get on the scoreboard first. We're second and ten then for Nottingham Trent. Venegas standing over the ball once more. Motion as well on the play. Venegas going lateral downfield. Coca fumbles the ball in the tackle. And the University of Exeter have stolen possession. There is a flag though. There is a flag on the play. So we'll take a listen in to find out what's happened. And he hands it off to Shules once more. He checks back on his inside. Is he over the whitewash? And that's a touchdown. Into the end zone. And getting the points. For the University of Exeter is Alex Schulz. As, as, as a QB in that moment, but especially not by one of the big guys. Everything at this, they have to convert this into a first down. Otherwise, it's a big loss of possession. Venegas, his throw is blocked. It's an incompletion thanks to the work of Owen Beaumont. And now the University of Exeter will be in possession. See how that, that plays out as well. First and ten is with Abbott, who's looking downfield. He was under pressure. Interception by Nottingham Trent. Are they going to run it back into extra territory? Brought down just inside what would have been the beginning of their ten-yard play. Sam Wincott Johnson with the interception for Nottingham Trent. That has completely changed this final quarter. Watch this. Watch this replay right now. Exeter getting set up. NTU getting set up. And it was... As the ball was snapped, it's this play right over the middle where, where the QB was getting pressured and it was right into where, where, you're, where the linebackers were standing. First and ten now for Nottingham Trent. 
Chris Venegas waiting to get the snap. Play action now with Venegas looking downfield. He's got to move out of the pocket. He's fumbled the ball. It's loose. Exeter can claim it. They've taken possession back straight away. And after the amazing work of the Trent defence, the offence have ruined the party. And if we watch this here, we look, drop back. It's exactly what happened to... It's exactly what happened to the NTU QB, getting pressured, instant tackle, done. Does that take the game out of reach? I do think it does. I... Here we go. So Abbott looking downfield, looking for Joe Bush in the end zone. What a play from the University of Exeter's Ben Abbott. Looks downfield and Joe Bush was in a land of his own. Not a Trent player in sight on the far side of your screen. Here they go. Venegas, play action, stepping away from the pocket again. He's got time to send it downfield. And he finds the intended receiver as well. What a catch for Nottingham Trent's Joe White. Joe White, they're coming up with the catch. We've said his name a fair few times this match already. And he has been, yet again, one of those wide receiver core that, uh, that Venegas has wanted to get the ball to. Um, and we'll watch the replay now. Um, it was really, it was great blocking there by the running backs as well. Let's give a shout out to the running backs. And then up in the air. And that was a perfect one-on-one -on -one situation. And with Joe White there, bringing up his height, making strong moves, grabbing the ball. Joe White getting the best of Lachlan Brown there. And it's first and 10 for Nottingham Trent. Venegas again, looking downfield, taking his time to make the throw. He does, and it's a touchdown for Nottingham Trent University. What about that from Selassie Sosu? Look at him telling the camera, that's number two, and that is Nottingham Trent mounting a comeback. Doing this for those players that are currently sat out injured right now, but watch this replay. What a dime, throwing it through the air, making his target known, and Sosu coming up with the catch. It's a very high snap to James Bush, so he's had to do very well to try and control that. It's going to go out of bounds at the side for not much yard gain at all. What? Well, let's see what happens. First and ten, Nottingham Trent. Lots of lateral motion there at the line of scrimmage. Venegas is looking to move out of the pocket. He sends one deep down the field because a man is open. And it's a touchdown for Nottingham Trent! It's Ben Harrison! The man I said not to take your eyes off. Have the defender's eyes off him. And Nottingham Trent are closing the gap on the scoreboard. They're going for two here. Venegas takes the snap, looks downfield. Takes his time, throws it long, throws it deep. It's broken up in the backfield by Exeter University. Well, here we go then. Fourth down and five for the University of Exeter. James Bush does put boot to ball and send it downfield. And the only person home for Trent is Ben Harrison, who's not touched it. He's just watching it along with the rest of the Exeter University team. That is what you call a punt. They're two yards out from the Nottingham Trent line. And so that was incredible there by the Exeter defensive line. Here we go now, second and lots for Nottingham Trent University, but they might have done it with Sosu, but he couldn't get out to the sideline again and go out of bounds. So again, the clock counts down. Four seconds left. They've got to snap this ball and get it moving. I don't think they're going to do it. They're not. That's the full-time whistle at Exeter University. Are your champions? Before we get started and talk about the game and basically talk about what happened, I want to give thanks to the NTU Renegades, you know, the coaching staff, my teammates for just welcoming me into their family, you know, for being so nice to me when I first got here. They've helped me so much and they pushed me to become the person that I am today. And I'm forever, forever grateful. And congrats to Exeter for winning the Division One championship. Let's get started. Let's talk about what happened. Let's talk about what happened. It was a crazy game. We started off really strong. First play of the game, we throw a 50 yard bomb to Ben. We score on the first drive. Um, we go back and forth and then we ended up scoring on the second drive on a quarterback keep. Uh, so the score is 14-0. Exeter then scores uh, with number 14. That kid is fast. Give him props, he's fast. Scores a touchdown, they go for two, they get it. 14-8, we get the ball, we go three and out. And I don't know what happened. Craziest thing ever, it's like if, if it happened in a dream or in a bad movie, 
Our own punter kicks the ball in the back of our own player's head. The ball goes back to our own end zone. Exeter gets it. Touchdown. The craziest thing happened. So now as the score is tied, 14-14, and they score both their touchdowns in less than a minute. Craziest thing ever. Now, oh, shoot, there's a game. They get the ball second half. They wasted four to five minutes on the clock just just driving the ball down, all runs down the middle. Our defense couldn't stop it. Then they score. Now they're up six. We get the ball. Then there's a fumble in which they ended up scoring off that. Now they're up two touchdowns. We get the ball and then we punt it. They get the ball, they punt it. And then we go for it on fourth down and we just can't connect. They get the ball, they throw an interception. And so the momentum shifted. All right, let's see if we could score. First play, I drop back. Someone comes in free. I fumble. I know I should have fumbled. And then they score off that. Now they're up three touchdowns. Exeter sent two or three of our players to the hospital. Um, all defensive guys. So we we're in a bad position. We ended up getting the ball with seven minutes left. We scored within four plays. Trailing by two touchdowns now. They get the ball. They go three and out with a bad punt. And we score on the first play the next drive. So now we're down by a touchdown. Now, when you look back at it, maybe we should have kicked it. Maybe we should have went for two. We should have just kicked it. We would have been down by eight. Eventually, we did go for another drive with a minute and 50 seconds left. But we, we were just put in a bad position. Our mistakes cost us the game. If I don't fumble and I just keep it secure and we drive and we score on that drive, we're just down the touchdown with 10 minutes left in the game. And so it could go either way. Um, but overall, what I learned in this game is that I can't control everything. I could control what I could control. Maybe we should have kicked the ball. We would have been down by eight. Maybe I should have thrown it to Ben Moore. Maybe I should have done this. Maybe we shouldn't have ran that play. You look back at it, Maybe you should have done this, that. The way I see it, you just learn from it. It's just a game at the end of the day. I'm not mad nor am I sad. You know, it's football, it's, it's gonna happen. Some crazy things happen in football. Watching back on the stream, I could have had my Tom Brady moment. I could have had it, the opportunity was there for me, but you know, but I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm beyond blessed. Who would have thought that I would have the opportunity to play football overseas? I'm only 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and I'm Mexican. That's two things that are bad in the eye test as a quarterback. There's not a lot of Mexican quarterbacks, and a lot of quarterbacks are as short as 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, I'm just breaking barriers and trying to do the best that I personally could do. Besides us losing, we still had an historic run. We went undefeated in regular season, which has never been done before in school history. You know, I passed for 30-something touchdowns, over 2,000 yards. A lot of things happened that didn't happen last year, nor in previous years. My number one receiver, Selassie, had zero touchdowns last year. Now he leads the receiver core with 12 touchdowns. That's a touchdown a game, averaging. Ben Harrison, who in my eyes, in my eyes, could definitely be a Division One athlete in the states for sure without a doubt a lot of uk players could over here too you know i've practiced i've played against uh bryce young i've known bryce young since i was in the eighth grade i played against guys who are starting in the nfl right now clark phillips for example who, who's the starting corner for the atlantic falcons uh, there's a lot of talent in the uk that you know may not get their shine right now but sooner or later they will overall congrats to exeter i made this channel for all my family members back home, my mom, my sister, my dad, my grandpa, my grandma, my cousins, my uncle, my aunts, to see something they've never seen before. Knowing someone who's going to get their education 5,000 miles away from home and also playing the sport that they love. I'm gonna continue to post, continue to shine the light of the UK players who have the potential to go to America and ball American players. Um, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity. It didn't go the way I wanted it to, but it's okay. It's life. You're not always going to get what you want. 
you gotta play with the cards that you have dealt with. That's really much it. I do gotta say though, don't judge me by my wins, but judge me by my losses. The tape does not lie. I've only had one loss in the UK. If you look back at it and you see the way I play, you'll see if I'm really good or not. I had a lot of players, you know, congratulate me and just admire me as a quarterback. And, you know, I would not be here if it wasn't for God. You know, he's helped me so much in this journey and I put my faith on him and him only. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching this video. Congrats to Exeter, number five, 99 and 14 are some real ballers. You guys deserve it. And yeah, hopefully I see you guys soon. Make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe. Another Venegas quarterback, within four to five years, you'll be hearing in the UK making some noise. So this is not the last you heard of a Venegas. Venegas, 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 Venegas. But yeah, man, thank you guys for this journey. This journey will stop here and then we'll start a new journey pretty soon. So hope to see you guys soon. Hopefully you guys subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.